Hello everyone, I would like to show you the newest update to Terpainter. It now supports animation, which we can uh, also smoothly preview in the viewport. And all the threads generated will be stable. And for all those uh, new functionalities, we have a new panel that is animation uh, with some uh, new sliders over here. And then there is one extra feature that is fabric thickness. Let me also preview it quickly. Uh, so I will need to uncheck the animation uh, because we have a baked mesh for that. And now we can easily preview the uh, thickness. So you can see this mesh generated over here uh, with some uh, features uh, like rim loops, uh, like uh, push for the shape of the rim. Uh, this is just a built-in solidify modifier into our Terpainter. And now we'll take a look at uh, how to set up the modifier to work with animation. If you are seeing the Terpainter for the first time and would like to see the general guide, uh, the link will be in the description to the features walkthrough. And now let's focus on the new features. So we have this new animation panel over here. And I have this uh, very simple animation uh, of the cloth. And this is done in Blender. I have it baked over here in the cache. Uh, and uh, I put a Terra Painter modifier on top of that. And how it works with uh, just uh, with the weight paint for the vertex group selected over here, we can add some uh, tears to this mesh. So let's quickly rearrange those tears a bit. So with the weight of zero, I can remove the tears with the weight of one. I am adding some tears to this uh, banner. And now that we are happy with the shape, we'll need uh, the Geometry Nodes editor actually, uh, but uh, don't be afraid of that. It's very simple setup and there are two buttons exposed that we'll need to use. So with the modifier for the Turp Painter selected, now you can see that in the Geometry Nodes modifier, we have those two nodes that are very important for the animation. So uh, we have to remove the bakes uh, for the previous animation since we changed the mesh. And there below the bake animation, we have this info that we need to change the mode for the baking to animation because by default it will be set to still. And now that we are ready, uh, let's actually preview the animation without baking so you can see that the threads are going crazy. It's very slow. We can actually uncheck the secondary motion and now it will be without all this craziness, but yet again, it calculates all the threads for each of the frames. So now all we have to do is go to the first frame and bake the still and bake animation. And now we are ready to go. And now you can see the smooth animation preview in the viewport. So this is it. That's how to set up the animation for the Tear Painter. It is important to uh, have the animation checked in the uh, animation panel and to properly set up those uh, bake nodes uh, in the geometry nodes editor. And now let's take a look at some of the options in the animation panel. Uh, one of them is the follow surface. So if we take a closer look at uh, our baked animation, you will see that the threads uh, during the animation sway and uh, drag behind the cloth. Uh, which is cool for a mesh like this. But however, if we were animating, for example, pants or something like that, we would like them to uh, only slide on the surface, uh, not to clip with the mesh beneath. So with the follow surface on, we bake the simulation again. And now you'll see that if we take a closer look, all those threads are animated, but the a motion is translated to the surface of the mesh. So there is no risk of any unwanted clipping with the mesh beneath. And then uh, there is another section that is procedural wind. Uh, let's preview that. Uh, but first, uh, actually, let's remove the back of the animation we did before. And I will now disable the cloth simulation so we can see it more clearly. So now if we uh, turn on the procedural wind, and if we hit play in the viewport, now we can see those threads uh, gently swaying in the wind. We can also adjust the strength of the wind and we can add some turbulence to the direction of the wind. And we can also adjust uh, the direction itself. And the sphere relates to the coordinates of the scene when we are looking at the scene uh, from the front in the viewport. So, for example, if we set the sphere like that, 
Now the wind is blowing from behind of the banner. And then at the very bottom we have the simulation precision. By default it's at 2, which should be perfectly fine. And then there are those uh, two features that are scale secondary motion. So for now uh, set to 0, so there is no secondary motion. Uh, back to 1, you can see that it's the gravity, the wind. And we can tone it down to something like 0.5. And then there is the uh, same uh, feature, but uh, separately for the preserved threads, just as an extra level of control, since those threads will be closest to the body if we were simulating some clothes, for example. And on that note, let's move to another file. Over here I have an Alembic imported from the Marvelous with some simulation. So we have the clothes over here and we can uh, preview the animation in the viewport like so. And I have this model textured over here, so now we will follow the process from the very beginning. So first of all, let's just drag and drop the Ter Painter Jeans uh, preset. We don't need the border files in this case. And now we will need a vertex group for the tears. And now we have to select it over here. And now where we will paint the weight for this vertex group, uh, the tears will appear. So uh, let's start right now and we can see that something is wrong, but that's actually all right. Uh, we just need to remember to rename the UV map uh, name to Blender's default name, which is UV map. And now we can see it appear over here and we can also adjust the appearance of the threads with the threads UV. So now all the fibers have nice textures and now we can proceed with painting uh, more tears on our jeans. Let me actually fast forward this part. And now that we are ready, we can also adjust the length of the uh, threads uh, uh, in the fuzz. And now that we are ready, we can proceed with the animation. So once again, we will need the animation panel for this. And once again, we'll need a geometry nodes editor uh, opened. And now with this modifier selected, uh, we go over to the geometry nodes setup and over there we can find those two nodes. And once again, remember to uh, set the bake mode to animation for this uh, particular node. And finally, it is very important to check the animation on and secondary motion before baking the simulation. And now that we are ready, let's uh, bake the animation. And now we can preview it in the viewport. So now you can see that the uh, playback is a bit slower since it's a denser mesh than in the previous example, but the animation is stable and all the threads are stable. However, there is this one issue we can see in the close up where the preserved threads are clipping through the mesh uh, of the surface beneath. And for that, there is the easy fix. We just need to check the follow surface and bake this animation again. And now if we hit play, you can see that uh, you can see that those threads no longer uh, go through this mesh beneath. So that's all good. And now uh, for the next step, we would like to add another layer of tears to the sweater. Uh, so all we have to do is just drag and drop uh, another preset for this. Let's use the fluffy preset. And over here, uh, we once again don't need the border fast. Let's create another vertex group for the tears for this uh, particular modifier. However, for a moment we can't find this vertex group we just created and that's because we baked the mesh in the previous modifier. So in a way we froze the mesh in a state before creating this new vertex group. So all we have to do is delete those bakes and now once again we can now find it in the modifier over here and in the future we will just need to bake those animations once again uh, for both of those modifiers. And now we are ready to go. Uh, let me once again fast forward this part. Uh, so we are painting the tears on the sweater over here. And now we are adjusting the shape a bit. For this example, we can also adjust the number of the preserved threads with the threshold uh, slider. And now that we have the uh, look uh, that we like, we can now once again dive into the baking of the animation so for that we once again need the animation panel where we need the animation on checked and secondary motion. And uh, now we can go into the baking. So let's start from the first modifier. So we are baking the jeans. 
and actually I don't love the speed at which it's baking so let's see if I have the animation on secondary motion is on so it's done properly oh yes so what was slowing down the baking actually was the second modifier so for now we don't need this uh, because it was calculating all the threads on each frame unnecessarily so now let's just do the baking just for the first modifier you can see that now it is much faster and now with the magic of editing let's actually also skip ahead so now we have the uh, animation once again baked for the jeans uh, for all those stars so that's great and next up we just need to bake the animation for our second modifier uh, for the sweater so once again we need to find those two nodes and uh, yeah remember to set the mode uh, of the baking to animation we have those two checked so now we are ready to go so we first uh, bake the steel on the first frame and then we are ready to bake the whole animation and now we are done so let's preview the animation in the viewport so we can see that all the threads are stable the animation is stable and just as a note, I noticed when using stacked modifiers, uh, sometimes the baking of secondary motion on the second uh, modifier would get crazy and what would fix it, just uh, deleting the bake and baking it again. I don't know, some kind of glitch on the Blender side, I believe. Uh, but other than that, there are no issues. So uh, yeah, enjoy the animation with the Ter Painter. And now just before we end this video, we have the last use case, which is the rigged character. So over here I have a rigged character from Blender Studio uh, that has some uh, very simple animation. And now let's see how the Ter Painter uh, will work on such mesh. So once again, uh, let's drag and drop the uh, Ter preset on top of our uh, model. Once again, we will need the vertex group for the Ters. We need to set it up in the modifier over here. And once again, this time the mesh is uh, very low poly, so it will look a bit differently, but we can freely paint the tears once again. And now we can also set the angle of the preserve threads with the angle slider. And now that we are happy with the result, we can move on to the animation part. So over here let's check the animation the secondary motion and let's find the bake nodes in the geometry node setup uh, let's set the mode uh, to the animation and now we can bake the steel first and now we will see that there is this small glitch since uh, for some reason uh, the nodes uh, calculate the typos for a moment now it is back to normal but don't worry, it won't uh, affect the animation except for the first two frames. And uh, after that, the animation will be uh, will behave properly. So let's see it in action. We can see it adjust for the first two frames. And after that, we have the proper animation of the tears and the threads we created. So this sums up the presentation of the update for the Ter Painter. It is available on Superhive and on Camroad. And I also invite you to my Discord channel. If you'd be interested in watching a more general guide to this tool, the link will be in the description of this video. So as always, I hope you'll find this tool useful and thank you for watching.